Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and in today's video let's fly the Airbus H160 from Norden Norddeich Airport out to the German North Sea to bring some workers to their oil rigs. There's currently a lot of construction going on in the North Sea and Aerosoft's North Sea add-on really captures that nicely, which we're going to explore today. Also, we're currently standing at Norden Norddeich Airport, also published by Aerosoft, which I really appreciate. It really captures that typical flair that you have on one of these North German airports at the North Sea really nicely. So that's exactly what one of those control towers looks like, and from here, we are going to head straight over to our helicopter. And over here we've got the uh, hangars of the um, FLN, which is doing a lot of touristic flights to the German Sea. And here is our main hangar for the H145. By the way, really nicely modeled from the inside over here. But for us, we are going to go over to our H160 today, which we are going to take out for our trip to the German oil rigs. All right, so we are fully boarded, and that means we've got quite a lot of passengers on board today that we are bringing out to the rigs, 12 in particular, plus obviously our first officer. I've just kept my own seat empty because, well, I can put a pilot over here, but he somewhat gets in the way of a lot of the uh, switches, so for that reason I'll just keep this empty. All right, very good, so FO can close the doors, we can close the doors as well. And here we go. We're using real life weather today and as you can see outside it is not all that nice on the way out. So flying out to the ocean is going to be interesting today. But for now let's work with what we've got on hand and start setting up our H160 helicopter from High Performance Group. At this point by the way once again thank you very much to High Performance Group for providing me with a copy of the helicopter. I'll switch to night mode straight away as it automatically dims the displays, but we can also use the luminescence key down here to dim the displays a little bit further, which I am absolutely going to do, because they are pretty bright by default. Okay, power-up test is okay, then we can go ahead and switch on radio, altimeter and GPS, do the light test and check the audio test and all the lamps are working nicely, very good. Okay, cool. So. Let's see, messages, what do we have? Engine fail, battery discharge, power up test okay, that's fine, we can acknowledge that. Uh, tank is about halfway full, sufficient for our flight today. And our navigation should be set up already. It is a little problematic there to actually get the correct course to all those oil rigs, but I'll show you a little trick on how you can find them easily. Okay, cool. Then... Position light can come on, and a collision to red, that's basically our beacon up there. I'll also turn the background lighting up a little bit. Just like that, very good. Okay, cool. So, we might as well put that one on down here, and that's it, okay. Transponder, we can certainly turn that on standby, 7000 as we are flying VFR is okay. And that's basically it. Okay, cool. So, we'll check the hydraulic system. Aux pumps can come on. Make sure that our cyclic is showing everything correctly, which it absolutely is. And then the aux hydraulic pump can come off again. Cool. So, VMS is selected, so we are good to go. Then we can commence our engine start. We'll start in sequence 1, then 2, starting with engine number 1. So the engine starts coming up, we get the oil pressure, uh, sorry, the uh, low pressure on the hydraulics warning, that's acknowledged and associated with the engine start. And now it's gone again. While the engine is starting, let's go ahead and pre-select our payload over here. We've got 18, sorry, we've got uh, 2,000 pounds of payload on board. We can go over to the status. Okay, that's a good start number two. Let's go ahead and start num uh, sorry on number one and let's go ahead and start number two. Okay, 
In the meantime, going into the options over here, we'll certainly set the um, weights to hectopascals since we are in Germany over here. The rest of the stuff we can leave as it is. Alright, the engine is coming up and starting. And here we go. Two good, two good engine starts. Then let's go ahead and do our remaining tests. Autopilot on. Then we press the disconnect button on the stick. All right. So all the stick buttons do work fine. Then let's do the pre-flight check over here. Pre-flight test in progress. I'm gonna wait till that's completed. In the meantime. Let's see if we can get hold of any weather information of anything in the area. So, we're at Echo Delta Whiskey Sierra. Probably doesn't have a Matar, but let's see. It doesn't have a Matar, that's fine. Then let's take something in the area, Echo Delta Whiskey Echo. That one does have a Matar. And the QNH is 9907. So, borrow. Here you go, 9907 set once, set twice, and the FO can set that herself, set three times, perfect. Okay, cool, so we've got two good starts, and we are ready to go. Then let's put the engines into flight mode. Close the guards, or rather make sure they are closed. And we'll also put the uh, landing lights on in system number one to indicate that we're about to start taxiing. Okay, looks very good to me. Temperature 22 degrees is good as well. We'll keep the engines play on the left side, and we're gonna go on our right hand side here onto the nav display, as that's a little bit more important for our departure. FMS mode is selected, and all of that looks pretty good to me. Okay then, cool. Park and brake release. We've got a wind sock on the field over there, so we're gonna taxi out. The taxiway is closed over here due to construction and progress at the moment, so we'll have to backtrack over the runway. Note that the H160 is capable of taxiing. We don't need to. Um, we certainly don't need to hover to our departure runway. Okay, off we go. Let's give it a go. Entering the runway, let's put the strobe light on. Okay, clear in the approach and clear in the departure. Backtracking the runway. In case you're wondering why I'm backtracking with a helicopter, well, quite easy. In case we get an engine failure, we can still land straight ahead should we desire to do so which we cannot do in case we just take off straight away that would give us a little bit more problems with our um, with our immediate relanding as needed okay transponder on so that part of the taxiway here is closed as we can see So is this part, but I am steering out a little bit just for the um, for aligning the helicopter with the runway. So don't worry about that. Not my best ever lineup, but it shall suffice. 
Okay, so last thing for us to do. Signs are on, emergency lights are armed, and then we're good to go. So, take off. Ten degrees pitch down to accelerate. Like so, and once we've got 65 knots, we can pull up. Here we go. Okay, positive climb, immediate re-landing is no longer possible. Landing gear up. Then we're gonna depart through a right-hand traffic pattern here. Make sure we don't overfly the cities. And we're going to climb up initially to about 2,000 feet. But we'll see how high we can actually get due to the clouds. But I believe 2,000 should be somewhat fine. Try not to overfly any of the farms here directly. Those farmers are typically rather unhappy about all the noise coming from aviation. Alright then, adding more power as I want to gain altitude quickly going over the dike. This is where normally most of the bird strikes would happen, so we want to get clear of that the quickest way possible. And then we are not going to overfly any of the um, islands over here, but we are going to go between them. And from there we are going to catch our route. That is going to be the, base comp the best compromise between noise abatement and efficiency over here. Okay, so plan is stabilized, we're on the way. We'll stay clear of the clouds over here, but in we are flying in class golf airspace, so staying clear of the clouds is all that we are legally required to do. And it looks like once we are clear of that first part over here, we should be clear over there in the back, so... That looks very good to me, we can start accelerating. And we can start making our way out to the sea. Okay, autopilot is engaged. Then let's just about update our route direct to Custa. Activate if it works. No, it doesn't. Okay. That's probably because I created this one from the Microsoft Flight Simulator map. And therefore, it's probably not in the official database. And for that reason, I can't enter it. But that's fine. We're flying out right now. We are initially going to follow the... Um, we're initially going to follow the track that we've got up here. But let's switch to the D map already. Because on here we get a lot more um, detail for what we need for our flight. Quite a bit of tailwind over here as well. Ground speed right now 156 knots versus 135 indicated. So certainly not going to complain about that. At least not for the way out. On the return we are going to talk about it. <laughs> Okay, so we've got, we're flying out into the ocean and you can already see that there is quite some stuff happening over here. Got the first tanker over there and there is a lot more happening in the region where we are currently flying to. But I'll show you in a moment. Let's couple ourselves to the FMS navigation. Now we're going to intercept the track to where we actually want to go. Couple of rain showers over there in the background. We need to hope that the visibility in there isn't too bad as after all we are flying VFR on this one. Also might be an idea just to climb a little bit higher here as we're now clear of that initial first cloud bank. So let's go up to two and a half thousand feet 
there's just a little safety margin here for ourselves in case anything happens on our flight helicopters descend quickly they don't just fall from the sky like a stone after all they look so ugly that the earth doesn't want them either however we still want to be sure that we are staying clear of um, the ground far enough that in case we get an engine failure the passengers got a little bit time to prepare before the ditching and that we can send a distress call that um, everybody knows where we are and where they have to search for us. On the map we can already see that we are approaching the first of the wind and uh, oil rig parks up there. Next one, next one is just to the left and in here we've got to search for our destination. Because unfortunately a lot of the ICAO codes are actually uh, missing. But we just go in here, open AIP, we can get some more data lay it on top of the map so in case there was any restricting airspace or anything the like we would get that information on the map now but this is actually quite all right okay staying clear of clouds what do we have in the background over there another vessel it seems one more over there and that's the tanker we're flying over and that's quite a big thing over there that is quite a big thing. One more over there in that lower cloud bank and another one over there. I told you the North Sea is quite busy, didn't I? 30 knots of wind here in two and, two and a bit thousand feet. Certainly doesn't help our course. Okay then, five minutes to run, we're just about reaching our altitude, so we can basically start our descent again already. But I'm gonna keep high, and I am probably gonna fly traffic pattern anyway around our destination oil rig. Because you can see the wind over here, and we want to make sure that we land into the wind at least as far as it is possible with a wind as strong as this. 30 knots up here so I wouldn't be surprised if on the ground it's like 15 to 20 knots which is quite a bit seeing that we are sitting in a helicopter over here and not in our typical A330 or Boeing 737 where the limit is certainly quite a bit higher. So over there we just have the over here we've got the first couple of windmills and uh, wind turbines coming into our view and looks like our destination wind park is just about in the rain. But do I see a rainbow over there? That's looking lovely for sure. The biggest challenge, for me at least, is to actually find the correct oil rig that we want to land on because there are several and then there's a couple of vessels that all have helicopter pads as well so quite a lot of fun things to choose from but that's the wind park we're heading to and is this the oil rig already could very well be with the wind coming from the left way we're, we're drifting like 10 degrees as we can see so we're actually flying somewhere over there yeah, that might be correct. That might be the right one. That might be the correct one over there. Okay, cool. So we're still on local QNH. We don't have, well, we obviously don't have any meta data available from the oil rigs, but that's fine for me. So let's see, Casta is obviously not directly in, um, not directly where we want to go. So let's start searching for our destination now. I don't think we need the A open AIP layer anymore. This looks alright for me now, thank you. Okay, that one is a big yellow 
oil rig, but I believe that our destination had a couple of uh, wind turbines closer to closer to it. We'll remember that one. Is that a ship actually? No, that's an oil rig. That's an oil rig. Wind farms coming in. Nice little rainbow over here. Okay, let's start our descent. We'll tell the autopilot to get us down to 1500 initially. Still gotta remain above those uh, wind turbines. Here we go, 1500, that's looking good. Okay, that could be it over there. I believe that's the rig we're heading for. Though I need to correct myself, I don't believe this is an oil rig. It's probably one uh, working on a wind turbine. Well, what do I know? I'm just the guy flying. The workers there. As long as they know what they're working on, I'm happy with that. Okay, cool. Let's start our continued descent. Slowly coming in over here. So the wind's coming at 35 knots, so it's even increasing with decreasing altitude. 35 knots from the left, so let's see where that helipad actually is. On the rig in question. Or on the... Is that a ship actually, not a rig? Probably is. Okay, let's stay up here, analyze our destination. If it is our destination, because it doesn't look like they've actually got a helipad up here. Do they? No, these guys don't have a helipad, so they are not our destination. Then we've just got to make the turn around. Maintain at least a bit of altitude. That's probably the rig next to it. That one does look like they do have the helipad. Okay, I find h tolls to be a little bit um, conservative here. So I'm going to put it on standby as we're about to approach. So that we don't get any nuisance warnings from it. So, they're just about attaching a, a propeller over there, but there's our helipad j just in front of us. So, approaching straight into the wind. Where's our destination? There it is. Yes, don't complain about the gear, you're about to get it, my friend. Okay, gear down. And here we go. Let's get in, slowly and steadily, straight into the wind. It might get turbulent on short final. You can see the wind is coming from straight ahead, and the bridge of that platform seems to be straight in the area, so we might get into the turbulence of the wind there like any moment. Let's take it slow and careful. Windsock seems to be fine though. Alright, on the ground Parking brake set. And here we are. 
Okay then, let's start shutting it down. So, number one, strobe lights off, landing lights off. Signs are gonna remain on for now. So, park brake on, collective pitch minimum, cyclic stick and pedal centered, engines. Going to idle. So, ECS and um, radio altimeters off. So, after 30 seconds cooldown, we've had those by now. Engines off. Rotor brake applier once the NR is below 50, so we just gotta wait for that. Battery discharging is acknowledged. Slowly winding down, now it's below 50. Rotor brake is applied. And acknowledged, thank you. And with that, the engine is coming down. Okay, so. Signs off. Anti-collision off. Though our rotor hasn't stopped yet, but if you can't see a rotor turning on the helicopter, I think you've got different problems. Okay, still turning. I don't know for quite long actually. Is that rotor brake pulled? Alright, it might just about be the wind. Not 100% sure about that. Tell you what, we're simply gonna shut it down over here like it is right now. And that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for flying along. I do hope that you like the H160 just as much as I do. I certainly really like it. It's a very good plane for just flying something different. Well, plane, helicopter, you get where I'm going with this. Very nice plane for just doing something different and absolutely recommendable. Very good system depth as well. Really enjoyable little helicopter. Even though I'm not 100% sure as to why the rotor isn't stopping right now, but I suppose I'm just going to leave it at that. Thank you for watching, everyone. I do hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, do let me know in the comments below. And as always, I'm really looking forward to your feedback on this one. If you're up for more, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you really liked the video, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you, and see you all again on the next one.